In this video, I'm gonna show you how to write electron configurations for larger atoms, such as bromine or tin. I'm gonna introduce you to a few new things in this video. I'm gonna teach you something called the noble gas abbreviation, um, which abbreviates an electron configuration even further. I'm also gonna teach you how to read electron configurations straight off the periodic table, so we don't need to write out energy diagrams anymore. We get rid of the need for that. And also I'm going to show you how to use the periodic table to predict the relative energy of all of the different orbitals. Remember I told you, don't bother memorizing this. I'm gonna teach you how to read this off the periodic table. Well, now we are finally there. So um, just before we get started, this video of course assumes that you understand all of the basic principles of coming up with electron configurations. If you don't, then this will probably be very confusing. So make sure that you feel at least somewhat good about all these different rules. And let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Now, I've got this periodic table all colored up. First of all, I've got bromine and tin marked because those are the elements that we're gonna work with in this video. I've got the different elements shaded um, based on which or orbitals they correspond to. So the yellow orbitals um, I shaded to represent elements that represent the filling of S orbitals. All the blue ones represent the filling of p orbitals, the pink ones represent the filling of the d orbitals, and then I didn't have this in the last video, but down here in orange, this represents the filling of the, s, of the f orbitals. And I also have the orbitals numbered on the side. And let me just um, kind of talk, I wanna start by talking about how all of this different shading reflects the energy, the relative energy of all of our orbitals. So as we're reading, and you saw this example already, as we're reading the elements on the periodic table, we start at the top with hydrogen and we work our way from left to right across the periodic table, and we just read as we go. Now, if you happen to have this information in your notes, and like have it in front of you while you're looking at this screen, that's gonna make this even cooler. I don't have the room to put them both on, on the screen at the same time time. But let's just kind of take a look at how this works. So we start here at 1, and this represents the 1, n equals 1, and it also represents s. So this is our 1s orbitals, and there's two electrons that go in there. And then after that, we move on down to here, and these boxes represent 2s. So if you're following along, we've got 1s, and now we've moved on to 2s. And after we do 2s, we go from left to right, and the next is 2p. So this is the order of energy of these orbitals, starting with 1s, then moving to 2s, then moving to 2p. After 2p, we move down here, and this is 3s. And after 3s, we move over here to 3p, and we do that next. Now let me slide back over. It was probably the last time I do this. 1s to 2s to 2p to 3s to 3p. So as you can see, we're just reading periodic table and getting this exact same information. So what comes after where we're at? We're at 3p. What comes after 3p? Then we move on down here to 4. We've got the s orbitals, 4s. And then after that, now they do seem to lose kind of number order a little bit. After 4s comes 3d and then 4p. So you, I do want you to notice that um, when we shift from s to d, we do like drop the numbers down like this. So we go 4s, 3d, 4p, and then after that we go 5s, 4d, 5p, and then after that we go 6s. Now don't forget 57, our next element is actually down here. So we go 6s, 4f, we stopped at 71, 5d 6p isn't this awesome 7s 5f 6 that's a 6 6d 7p gets us to the end of the periodic table pretty amazing so if you have a reference like this, or if you're able to draw this onto a periodic table, you can literally come up with the electron configuration of anything. Let's practice that with bromine. So we're gonna start up here, and we're just gonna count our way across the periodic table until we get to bromine. Starting up here at the top, we go 1s, 1, 2. I'm gonna write this up here. Bromine is 1s, 2. And then next we have 2s2, 2s2, and that is followed by 
2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2p, 6. And then what comes next is 3s, 2, 3p, 6. 3s, 2, 3p, 6. And that brought us to here. And then what we do next would be 4s, 2. I'm going to write that down. 4s, 2. Now we're into the pink elements for the first time. This is 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them. 3d, 10. 3d, 10. And then last but not least, 4p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4p5. That's the electron configuration for bromine. Can you imagine how tedious that would be if we had to actually do that by drawing an energy diagram or, God forbid, assigning uh, quantum numbers to all 35 of those atoms? That would have been so much work. So let's take this. Let me see if I can take this and copy this back. Copy this over to here shrink it down a little bit and change the color so we can see it. There's our electron configuration for bromine. That's beautiful. Let's do the same thing for tin. So with tin, we can actually kind of shortcut this a little bit because now that we know how to use the periodic table to do this, we can say, well, for tin, we don't have to go back and start at the beginning because we've already made it this far. We can just keep on going. So if we wanted to continue working off what we already have for bromine, uh, we'll just keep on going. We need one more of those four Ps. So let's change that to from a five to a six. And then let's see what comes next. After this, our next one would be 5S2, 4D10, 5P2. 5S2, 4d10 5p2 so there's our electron configuration for tin really big let's copy that and paste it and i have totally have the luxury of being able to copy and paste in my notes if you're writing by hand maybe you don't have that luxury Okay, so now that we've practiced coming up with electron configurations by reading the periodic table, I've got one more trick to show you. And that trick is called the noble gas abbreviation. So as you can see, especially with tin, electron configurations get really, really long. Um, even with bromine, there's only 35 electrons here, but this takes up quite a bit of space. So we actually have a shortened way of writing electron configurations for large atoms. And it really uses a lot of the same principles that I just used when we went from bromine to tin. So when we went from bromine to tin, I said, um, we've already done all of the initial work with bromine. Let's just keep on going for tin. And the concept of the noble gas abbreviation is really the same idea. Instead, what we do is take any one of these noble gases. You could use, literally use any one of them you want. And we write that into the electron configuration as a way of shortcutting or abbreviating a whole block of elements. So for example, um, let's say that we're talking about, let's say we're talking about neon right here. If we just wrote the electron configuration for neon, reading it off the periodic table, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So what we can do is take that portion of an electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, we can just delete all of that and write in square brackets, write the symbol for neon. And a symbol for neon indicates 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So it's just abbreviating that whole entire chunk of information, just shortening it, making it a little bit more condensed. Now for tin, for tin, it doesn't make a ton of sense to abbreviate with neon because that didn't really get us anywhere. We would really rather abbreviate with a, a larger atom, like let's say argon. Let's say we wanted to use argon. So if we wanted to use argon, I'm going to get 
argon right here. Argon has an R. So the electron configuration for argon after neon, if we move past neon, would be 3s2, 3p6. 3s2, 3p6. So adding that 3s2, 3p6, which is what we have right here, neon plus 3s2, 3p6, that represents argon. So we can actually just take all of this, including the neon part, and abbreviate that with argon. Now we've got it shortened down even more. And you guys probably are starting to get the idea. For doing the electron configuration of bromine, argon would be a really logical abbreviation because argon would get us as much as we could get to a noble gas and then we could just continue on further. So if we were using, if we were wanting to write the electron configuration for bromine, bromine, the previous noble gas, argon would be a logical choice. But since we're still working with tin, and we'll go back and do bromine later, since we're still working with tin, if we abbreviate with argon, you can see we still have quite a bit of stuff out here on the end that let's, you know, let's try to get rid of it. So what's happening with our next noble gas down the road? Our next noble gas in line there is krypton. And krypton's electron configuration after argon goes 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, which is all of this, oops, all of this right here. Argon plus 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. So what we can actually do is get rid of all of this stuff as well, including the symbol for argon. We can replace all of that with krypton, the symbol for krypton. The symbol for krypton represents all of this right here. And now we've got our tin noble gas, or excuse me, electron configuration. We have that really nice and condensed and super shorthanded down into something that is really small. So let's go back and let's write that in as our electron configuration for tin. We said again that we were going to abbreviate it with Krypton, the last noble gas before we come to tin, Krypton, and the symbol for Krypton represents everything all the way through 4p6. So Krypton in square brackets, followed by 5s2, 4d10, 5p2. For bromine, Again, anytime with any element, we always want to abbreviate with the previous noble gas. So for bromine, we would abbreviate with argon and continue from there. Let's write in our argon abbreviation first. Um, bromine's electron configuration abbreviate with argon. And that argon is going to represent everything all the way through. Argon goes all the way through 3s2, 3p6. So argon gives us everything through 3p6 and we pick up at 4s2, 3d10, 4p5.